Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Open source enthusiasts, Python experts, and my dear friends. Unlocking efficiency. How pods revolutionize matrix server automation. If you guys are new to this matrix server concept of home servers and uh, you are trying to get into this field and uh, build your own home server and host it, then I would suggest to take a look at my related videos in my playlist. You can find it out here. This series of playlists will provide you with the necessary information on how to host the home servers, not just Matrix. I am also even covering Mattermost because these uh, servers are linked in various fashion. And also I work on bridging the Matrix and Mattermost servers with WhatsApp and various other messaging services. Bots are actually users controlled using code. This is the reality. In Matrix server, you can uh, you want to do certain things again and again. So let me zoom in a bit so that you guys can see it better. In in a server, you might want to do the same thing again and again, and uh, the same thing again and again, not just in one room, in multiple rooms and multiple spaces. Because of these kinds of repetitive action, you can write bots of your own style and your own choice, and then you can invite those bots into the rooms that you are part of or even in those rooms that you are not part of so bots are very uh, versatile piece of code that can be written in python rust and various other frameworks this discussion i'll be introducing you what is a bot and also i will also dive into the framework called matrix neo and its associated example bot called as matrix eno bot i'll be going into the details of the code but not the the code logic itself. I'll be going through the detail of the code base that what you will need. This is very important to have an overview. So that's why I'm making this video. And apart from that, I'll be anyway sharing your demo first. So stay tuned for that. In another two, three minutes, I'll be sharing the demo. You can do room moderation. You can start sending, redacting, and receiving messages, including receiving messages using sync API. You can execute system level commands. That is the commands that has to be run inside the server that can also be done. I'll be showing you the examples here. In order to, for this to be done, what you will need? What are the prerequisites? First, you will need a home server. So this is a by default requirement that you will have to uh, manage. Inside the home server, you need to create a bot user. Bot user is nothing but a regular user that uh, you can use as a bot. I'll be showing you how to uh, do this modification in the config.yaml file. So once the config.yaml file is updated, then you can actually configure this bot as a service itself. So once you make the bot as a service, then you can use the uh, system CTL start service. If you are aware of that Linux command, then you can use that also. And you can use that to restart and stop the bot. After that, once you have your bot, you can start experimenting with it. These are the pretty simple steps that you need for getting the bot up and running. Now we are going to see a bot in demo. Now I have arranged the window in front of you into two halves. The one half, this part of the window will contain the bot Python code execution. You will be seeing how the bot is executed and what are the various files that you can find here. I'll be showing it here. In the right side, where I have opened an element.io uh, client in which I have already logged in as a user Kamal. Through this user, I will be trying to work with the bot and I will be showing what this bot is capable of. Let me show you a background of uh, the Matrix Eno bot. This has been uh, written by 8go. You can see this particular uh, repository. Do leave a star for this repository. The repository description provides a very detailed explanation about the background of the bot. I am not going to dive into that particular aspect. What I am going to dive into is the usage aspect. In case of the usage, there are various uh, methods you can use it. First and foremost, you can ask all these kinds of commands to the bot. All these commands in, uh, requires the bot to connect to the internet. There might be some challenges. I will be sharing you what are those challenges in a couple of minutes. And then you can use bot as an admin. All this uh, task that you are seeing here, it is run by the bot, but it is using Python at the backend. I will be showing you that how it is being done so that you guys can understand what is going on in the 
bought as such let me zoom in a bit so that you guys can see it better let me now move to the element.io and uh, here let me actually create a room for our benefit so let us create a room i'm going to say test room bot tester and uh, testing in a bot and i'm going to make this room as public it's better that way bot tester and then i'm going to create the room now once the room has been created we have to invite the bot before we start inviting the bot in this location we need to start the bot the bot has to be started in a linux environment the reason why you need a linux environment is there is a library called as lib olm this library can work only in linux at this moment i have tried it in windows but i had faced some challenges so i i had created a virtual box ubuntu virtual box in my windows 10 machine and from that ubuntu virtual box i have uh, cloned the cloned this repo this particular the repo that you see here i have cloned it and from there i am running this bot i'll be explaining these things to you again in couple of minutes so i am executing this code python3 main.py config.yaml this is what i'm executing don't worry about it this is the access key that the bot has received uh, this bot i will be anyway deactivating so you don't need to worry that i'm sharing this key and in this room i am going to invite the bot okay now we are able to see this particular bot here so i am going to click on eno bot and then i am going to click on invite once i do this the bot gets invited here and at the same time you see there's a lot of activity going on here the invite that has been accepted by the bot is also updated in the logs here this is one of the reason why i made the uh, the window into such a fashion so that you guys can see what happens in the client at the same time in the background in the backend let us start by a very simple command i am going to say hello you don't need to even tell that this particular message is to the bot the bot will recognize a particular message and if it thinks that this is a message to the bot the bot will automatically respond you see that the bot when i say hello to the bot or to the room the reply comes from the bot as a positive message that you encourage me so if i again type hello you will see a different message coming from the bot you are better than a triple scoop ice cream a funny way of you know the uh, the messages the bot actually starts responding like this there are lots of uh, various commands that you can ask the bot out of that we can ask the bot to work on the date and time so if i say date and if i send it you will see that it provides the date for not just one location it gives it for five different locations and you can see that everything is updated in the uh, in real time how this is possible i'll be explaining it to you in a couple of minutes but as of now i'm just i'm demoing what the bot can do in fact you can even restart the bot so if i say restart bot what will happen is in the back end i need to configure the service the bot as a service then only it can restart but yes once i restart the bot the entire process gets restarted and i will get a message also so the uh, the bot is capable of restarting itself and you can see the message is coming here because it's a super user requirement so i am going to give the password here and once the password is accepted so you see the password is accepted and the bot did restart and the bot did reset itself so all these things are possible and these are all system level commands as you saw this is not just the uh, command that is executed inside the room you you can execute a lot of things inside the room also but the intention of this particular discussion is to tell you the capacity or the capability of the bot as a whole if you guys want to understand uh, how the in room capacities of the bots are i would suggest you to look at the matrix commander video there i have discussed in detail about the various commands that the bot can execute the same bot the matrix you know bot that i am talking about it is based on the matrix neo framework it, it is based on the matrix neo template i'll be going there before that let me go to the presentation so now you saw the bot in demo so you have seen in the bot in demo i'll be going into the template but before we go into the template you have to understand one thing one over you know now let us assume that if you want to create a bot you will first of all require a way for the bot to start so that will be in the main script 
right and in order to in order to work different kinds of bots it's not you are not going to write the command or the script for a single bot right you will want to write the uh, script that can be used with various types of username and uh, passwords and you will want to change it continuously so you will have a file for configuration detail and there has to be a database to which the bot can dump the data the responses that the bot can give has to be also configured the bot commands the requests like for an example let us go back to the uh, here the request that has come from the user is restart bot here the request is date here the request is hello all these are actually kind of requests that the bot can execute okay and these are all called as bot commands how we are going to configure it this is also one of the key aspects of programming the bot and finally we have the command scripts if you see the commands that you see here it is this command that you see here which happened is not because the bot was magically able to connect with the linux uh, kernel no there is a background sub process that has been written in python which the bot calls and then that python code executes this particular output so this is how the bot works in matrix server you can do a lot more with this bot so if you go into the user you can see that there are two people here so bot is a user only it's not some kind of a special uh, uh, special account or anything it's a normal user which you are going to use it as a bot and in fact the room itself will not be able to find that this is a bot and this is a user until unless you specifically name it as you know bot i mean there is no way that the room users are going to find it but it's always better that you give a very specific and uh, good identifying name based on this configuration if you scroll down the parts of the neo matrix neo framework we have the main.py that is the first script that we need to execute if you see the script that we have run here you will see that i have executed main.py and config.yaml the config.yaml is this the configuration file i'll be showing you the file in a couple of minutes all these files i'll be you know sharing with you there is scripts folder there is the bot commands the command dictionary the message responses and the callbacks and the storage.py all these files i'll be sharing with you guys and how it is being done so you might be wondering okay why to go with such files and uh, why not write all these commands in a single file if you guys are from the programming background you know that how difficult it can be and how long a single script can become and it becomes really difficult to manage it so it's always the uh, practice to refactor so if there is going to be main.py only the main components are called in this file and when it's going to be scripts it is a folder basically which will contain the various scripts there are bot commands and the command dictionaries that i will be sh sharing it in a couple of minutes there is message responses and there is storage the storage will be the database to call the database to interface with the database that is the script and finally the configuration file let us now before we dive into this uh, parts of the uh, these uh, files i want to introduce you to the matrix neo framework to begin with so let us go back and let us expand this and the matrix neo template it's uh, it's a template that is already uh, it is already used by many matrix bots in fact so if you go to the uh, go to the matrix neo template this link also i'll be sharing with you guys this uh, particular uh, neo template features the bot commands the sqlite and postgres database backends the configuration files the multi level logging docker and participation in to end room encryption so all these steps that i that i uh, spoke to you right now is part of this particular template the reason why this template has been created is to in order to interact with the server and to matrix server home server and to work with its various api it's not a straight forward process and uh, on top of it the matrix server is written based on twisted python framework which is an async based framework and you will have to work you will have to deal with lots of functions that is asynchronous in nature in order to avoid all this complication the matrix template provides you with uh, the certain formats that you need to follow if you follow that and if you have those files then you must be able to get a bot and up and running in no time as you can see here there are lots of projects that is using 
this particular template and among them matrix you know bot is one of the uh, important uh, bot template and also matrix commander is also a very important bot today i am discussing matrix you know bot i will also make another one video where i discuss about the various other bots that i that you see here so that you guys can get a feel of what exactly happens in the back end here the project structure actually provides the same way the main.py the config.py storage.py callbacks bot commands message responses all this information that i provided to you in this particular area i had taken it from here you can read about it and you will be able to understand this however i have given you a very high level overview of what these files do i will also go into these files and i will be sharing with you uh, uh, i will also be showing where these files are used inside the matrix you know bot in couple of minutes but this is just a introduction and uh, do uh, if you have any questions you can always connect with the uh, developers in their respective uh, go to the end you can connect to connect with the developer a morgan dot uh, xyz he, you can connect with him in this particular room and also they are pretty active in the synapse dev uh, room also in matrix.org uh, so feel free and uh, join the rooms and you will be learning a lot every even when you are going to listen to what others are facing what other problems uh, are you will be able to learn a lot so that is config that is bot commands that is main that is message response storage so this is a default uh, set of scripts that is available in the template and only that scripts are getting modified by the various bots so that is why i wanted you guys to see both not just uh, matrix eno but also matrix neo i am going to walk you through the code base of matrix eno bot the matrix eno folder that you are seeing here that i have already imported into the vs code framework and this is the tree the uh, folder tree of matrix eno bot inside the matrix eno bot you have the eno folder and below that there is store which will be created once you start the bot before that it will not be created and then there is lots of smaller scripts the main script is the main.py you can see that here and then you have the config yaml.example so this is the file that you will get from the repo by default so if you click on this config yaml.example you will see that it is filled with lots of comments this is one of the important aspects of uh, matrix bot development you will be given sufficient information on what you have to do in order to get the bot or for that matter any part of the matrix server home server working this is one of the you know very good thing that i liked about this particular ecosystem you can go through this the first command prefix you don't need to worry about it this then you need to provide the user id this is the user id of the bot that you need to uh, create in the matrix home server that i spoke about then you need to provide the matrix the this particular users user password once you give this user password only this particular bot can act as your this particular user can act as your bot apart from using username and the password you can also use the matrix access token if you want you can use this option or you can leave it as it is you don't need to worry about this this is by default command moving forward you need to provide the home server url this home server url can be any uh, public home server url also this is one of the differences you can actually connect with public servers and uh, create bots for that public servers also but you may not be able to execute certain commands because you may not have that level of priority or that level of power in those rooms so keep that in mind you need to provide the home server url here the device id you can leave it as it is but if you are going to create multiple bots in the same server then change the device id the device name this is the name that you need to provide to that particular bot the next thing is trust our own devices keep it as false default rest of the things change the device name also leave it as false the storage so by default the storage uh, the process will be to use the sqlite database most of the time i have been using only sqlite database it's more than sufficient because the bot is not going to work on very heavy duty action but if you think that bot is going to uh, bot has to be very responsive like it is going to be a moderator or it is going to do some heavy lifting inside the uh, server then it is always better to uh, keep the bot uh, database as a postgres because the postgres is very very responsive when compared to sqlite and then comes the commands.yml 
so these are the commands that i was talking about that you need to provide that bots can work upon so this is a storage path and then we have the logging level logging level you can leave it as it is there is nothing to change here so this is the config.yaml file that you need to think about this is one of the file that i want you guys to first look at second is the service the matrix eno bot service you can see that there are two files here so one is the matrix eno bot service dot example this is the file that you will get from your repo once you clone the repo i'll be showing you the cloned repo i'll be showing you the repo the files here so that it will be easier for you the reason for using this matrix eno bot service uh, example is that you can actually create the bot as a service itself so let me show you what i mean let me go back to the bot here and uh, also let me open the client because that is much more easier to explain to you what i'm going to do is you see that bot had a had an opportunity to restart that is because i had already created a this bot as a service so what i mean by service so if i say sudo system i hope you guys are able to see this let me zoom in a bit yeah sudo system ctl status matrix yeah so if i do a matrix eno matrix hyphen eno hyphen bot dot service and if i say status it will ask me for the password and once i give the password it is telling to me that this particular bot is in the activating stage meaning this bot is actually working so if i do a quit and if i say stop i will be able to manipulate the bot from this location itself without actually going to the uh, going to the python uh, script and running it so i can do that here so if you see it is inactive and if i disable it so if i can go out and disable it so if i say disable and if i execute it it is removing it from the target and if i do a status right now you will see that the mod uh, the uh, the state is inactive and dead and stopped in a bot so now it is completely stopped now let me let me try come here and if i send hello you will see that there is no response as such and once this service is properly working then you will be able to restart the service and you will be able to work with it in a very uh, streamlined fashion okay now till now i have discussed with you related to the various files so i told you about the enobot service and i have discussed with you regarding the config.yaml file next what i want you guys to take a look at this the the most easiest one the most easiest one is the main.py if you click on main.py you will see that there is lots of imports and among them the chief import is from neo so this is the matrix neo format that i was talking about the matrix neo format has async client and async client config which which is the main class which can interface with the matrix server the rest of these classes are going to be helper classes that will help you to work with the rooms will help you to work with the verification device updates and login etc etc also there is the uh, server part a i o h t t p so this is for async io so this i am not going to dive into this is a huge uh, concept in itself uh, do take a look at async io framework in uh, python uh, it's it's kind of a framework that is not usually touched by even web developers but most of the uh, communication servers are based on that kind of web servers only let me scroll down you will see that we are importing couple of more calls from callbacks configs and storage i'll be going into config and storage in couple of minutes and then we see that the main function is started and we start inviting so the config.yaml file and uh, the storage the configuration etc is uh, initiated and then the async client config is called and uh, once the client config is called then the async client is called based on the client config after that only you will be able to get the interface with the uh, home server after that you can uh, after the rest of the process will start so this is how the main.py starts now the most important next step is the config. so if you go to config.py here you will see the file comment itself it tells what it is doing the file implements the utility function for reading the yaml config file performing the according initialization so these are the important steps the config file does and if you go through this you will understand the process that it is getting followed in this file it's a basic python file which parses 
the config.yaml file into python readable objects next the config.py is complete then we will go to storage.py so if you go to storage.py storage.py is where you will see in line number 33 the sqlite is getting initiated once the sqlite uh, connection is getting initiated then you will be able to execute the table require uh, table creation and then you can start the migration process here so here what is happening is by default it is assumed that you are going to use only sqlite and only that process is available here so if you are going to implement postgres then you need to accordingly modify this so keep that in mind we have looked at main we have looked at config we have looked at storage and now let us go to something more interesting so let us go to commands.yaml.example so this is the example command file that has been shared by the developer itself you can modify this when you are going to create your commands file. Uh, if you go scroll to the top this particular eno bot has lots of commands that is uh, getting the, uh, getting executed so you can read through this commands.yaml file you have to make a copy so this is the first step that you need to do you have to make a copy and then modify the uh, copy commands.yaml file and then you can add whatever data you want so in my case i will be changing the location where the commands.yaml file is first thing and second thing i will be also telling where the scripts will be i will be showing you the scripts also then you will see under the commands there are various commands that i am calling so we have help we have regex we have markdown convert there are lots of commands that comes in so inobot as i was telling you does a lot of things like alert backup btc so all this btc is going to connect with the uh, uh, with one of the scripts which is going to connect with the uh, internet there is check which checks the health status of your server there is date time that i showed it to you there is duckduckgo search option there is disks so like this there are lots of format lots of commands that has been created inside this commands.yaml file the command underscore dick dot pi will parse this commands.yaml file so that is the purpose so now you see the framework right that there is a configuration.yaml file that is parsed by a particular python file and that particular python file will send an object to the uh, the client that is going to execute the final uh, commands to the server so this is how the matrix bot uh, bot interacts with the client and once you understand how these commands and how these uh, uh, the client is working then you will be able to write very interesting and very useful bots for yourself so here is the bot underscore commands dot type you might be thinking what does this do so this is where the commands execution is getting done the commands.py is just passing the commands and you know restoring it but for a particular command so for an example let us say if the if the user is going to ask me the help so what is the output that needs to be provided uh, what can, to whom this message is going to be sent all this is taken care by bot underscore commands.py so you see all these files are working together it's not separate also it, it doesn't mean that you can put all them all of them together because it will become really confusing if someone is going to try to understand even for that matter today i'm trying to explain to you so easily because it was easy for me to first of all uh, understand how these files are working uh, together so we see right now that uh, the bot command we saw the chat function so let us click on the chat functions the chat function also will provide the various ways there are different types of chat functions like text based audio based and video based you can modify that based on the chat functions you can review this file uh, the files is fully commented out you don't need to worry about you know not understanding it i'm just you know giving an introduction so that you can go through this file without any inhibition when you see a code base which has some 10 to 15 different files with all different different names there is even for me there was a huge amount of inhibition before i started diving into each file but once you see these files open in front of you and uh, the steps are shown to you then it becomes really really easy you can even see the comments provide the details of the various arguments then we have callbacks so callbacks are ways of uh, you know getting the response from the server so uh, sometimes the server itself might want to call the bot and might want some information from it so such a time they will be using callbacks and for that also there is a set process and through that only the server can connect back and uh, that is where the callbacks come in and finally the scripts so if you see the uh, if you go back to the 
this is a scripts folder. So if you see in the scripts folder, you will see there are lots of bash scripts. Yeah, you heard me right. So if you click on hello.sh, you will see that it is a bash script that is getting executed whenever I send an hello. So let me go back and uh, let me open the client also so that you guys can see what is happening. And let me execute the bot again. If I say hello, the hello command actually gets converted by the Python code and the shell script is getting executed. So how this is, how is this being done? So let me go back to the script and let me show you what happened. So this is one of the key aspects of uh, understanding, understanding how the bots work. So let us go to bot.commands.py and if you scroll top, you'll see there is an import called as import subprocess. So subprocess is a library or I should say it's a built-in package in Python that can execute arbitrary commands on the shell of that particular operating system. So the bot command is getting uh, uh, written here. I mean the, that is getting uh, read here and then it is converted to uh, smaller commands and then it is matched here to the particular bot command. And if it is unknown, then it is given as unknown command or else the bot command is executed. So if you under OS command, if you scroll down, yeah, here it has been explained what exactly happens. You can read this out. You, you can take a moment and read it out. And you can see the OS command that is getting forwarded. And the environment is copied. And this is where the sub process is getting executed. So this is the process that I was talking about. So the command that whichever you are providing from the front end, that is uh, from the client, it gets passed and it then gets processed by sub process inside Python. That is how you are able to see, that is how the uh, matrix bot works in fact. Now that you guys have understood where exactly the sub process exists and how to code your uh, scripts and how to code your uh, commands and uh, your bot requirements, this is going to be become very, very easy. Why? Let me tell you. So let me go back to the uh, template. And as I already told you, there are lots of templates that has been created by, uh, created based on matrix in your template, right? And if you go, now if you take a look at all this various bots that has been written, now it is way more easier for you guys to go into any of the bots. So if you go into reminder matrix, reminder bot, and if you go and look at their framework right now, you will see that it is following the same kind of a framework. So if you click on matrix reminder bot, and if you look at the various files inside, you will immediately recognize those files. You will see functions, you will see main, you will see storage, you will see config, you will see bot commands, callback. This kind of pattern is becomes evident. And then you will start diving into these files one by one, and you will start understanding them. The purpose of all this discussion is to improve your efficiency, right? The idea is that you can bring out the efficiency and revolutionize your matrix home server automation. How the matrix InnoBot is developed or for that matter matrix Neo based InnoBot is developed and how you can yourself develop the bots going forward. Also, there are lots of bots that is already developed. Make use of them before you develop something new. And most importantly, once you develop the bot, keep it open source and share it with the community so that you and the community can develop together with that said i believe you have learned a thing or two from this discussion do leave a like subscribe to my channel and uh, for further updates on similar kind of videos stay tuned till the next video practice 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 see you guys have a great time